Hello, Kenny, or should I say, UFO catcher Kenny. <laughs> So, you want some tips on how to capture UFOs, if there are such things? Hey, what's that? Girl, be quiet! As I was saying, my first tip is, you will never catch me or any UFOs, because you can't handle all this. <laughs> anyway, Kenny, my first hint is, look up in the sky for UFOs. After that, you're on your own. Good work, me! Hi everyone, it's me, UFO Catcher Ken. Welcome to another episode of What's in the Box. Unfortunately, Mom can't make it here today. I think she was a little upset last week about not there not being any plushies in the box. She's a fan of plush dolls, and last week was just all, all figures, like... Fujiko over here, and the reason why Fujiko today is my special guest is after filming last week, Mom told me that when we were doing our final tally, we forgot one Fujiko, so Fujiko-san, komenasai, so she'll be hanging out with us today. I'll put her uh, right here. All right. Okay. So. On behalf of mom, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that there are plush dolls in here today. I think it's a good thing mom decided to take a leave of absence today because it looks like we've got nothing but figures. Figures galore today. Got quite a few variations here of this One Piece figure. So I've got a uh, not familiar with who this character is, but she's dressed quite provocatively here, isn't she? Uh, glitter and Glamorous. Materia Korea. Materia Korea. Am I pronouncing that name correctly? So, you One Piece fans out there, please comment and tell me about who this character is and what role she plays in One Piece. So, one. Ooh. Have a white dress version of uh, Materia here. Another white version here. Back in black. Oh, I think I got overzealous when I was playing this one particular UFO catcher. The claw on this one particular catcher, this crane game was super strong, I kid you not. And a lot of the games, you'll notice that the claw, just uh, kind of um, a hint here, that for better or worse, for the most part, the claws are rigged and not in your favor. So they're usually set by default to be weak, and after every X number of tries, the claws get strong. And in terms of the strength of the claw, every now and then it'll be strong consistently from the moment it descends to the moment it drops your prize into the hole, but other times the claws are set to be strong only for a few seconds. So that's why sometimes you'll notice that the claw will pick up your prize, but drop your prize before it drops in the hole. So a little fun factoid for you. But again, when I was playing this one UFO catcher on Toreba, the claw was consistently strong throughout, so I think I got a little carried away <laughs> and ended up getting 
a whole lot of these figures over here. Ah, here's a familiar face. Face? Oh, Fate. A Fate Grand Order figure. Two of them. Yes! A Code Geese figure. And another Code Geese figure. box. Let's do our tally count here. Uh, materia here. One piece. And I am well aware of how popular One Piece is. I need to start watching. Hmm. Where, what should I do? I'll do... Do you guys have a preference as to which side I display? I think I have uh, several, so we'll try one this way, one that way, another this way, one this way. I think we've got like all variations covered there, right? All four sides of the box. Try this. Or you know what? Let me alter that a bit. Try this. There's over here. Hmm. It's right here. Last but not least, this over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And a uh, very sexy coat geese figure. Two very sexy code geese figures, and two fate grand order figures. So, can you see me? Yeah, you can. I think this week mom would have been very disappointed if she showed up today, because again, she's a huge fan of the plush dolls, not so much about the figures. But uh, me on the other hand, I'll take whatever I can get. And as I probably mentioned before, I don't really see these as winnings, more like rescues. Just always seeing those plush dolls and figures trapped, trapped in isolation, well, isolation with friends in those UFO catchers. And you just get the feeling that, you know, you, you want to free them. You want to free them from captivity. And I think that's what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks here. Um, Pretty much no commentary other than that. Uh, as always, thank you for joining me on another episode of What's in the Box. Feel free to leave comments about some of these characters over here because I'm, again, I'm not familiar with the, the Fate series or One Piece. And I, again, I know One Piece is super popular, but I've, I've never seen it. I need to get around to that. But Code Geese, I have seen back in the day but I'll probably have to rewatch at some point. So again, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, tell me who these people are and, and what their roles are in their respective series and subscribe. And as always, join us next week as I continue to tear down this mountain behind me and find out what's in the box. Thanks, see you next time.
Simons, the voice of Gurr from Invader Zim. And I hope you're having a doom, 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 doom kind of time when you're catching them UFOs in the UFO catcher machine. You know, I once caught a big rat monster in a UFO catcher machine. He was pretty mad about it. Had to put it back. So, uh, anyways, guys, tune in next time for another episode of UFO Catcher Ken Presents What's in the Box? And let me give you some advice uh, on catching some UFOs before I go. I would say the best way to catch a UFO is uh, to make some biscuits. Do you want to make biscuits? Have a fun time catching the UFOs and don't get annihilated because sometimes they get angry. Richard Horvitz, and your question is, how did you get into voiceover? That's a good question. How did I get into voiceover? I will tell you this, I didn't start out to be a voiceover actor, as much as I appreciate it and enjoy it immensely and have for over 30 years. I started out as an on-camera actor when I was a child. I started about 10 years old doing uh, commercials and then TV shows back in the days when there were only three networks. And then uh, in about 1989 or so, I switched my focus to voiceover, and I don't regret that at all. And while I still do pursue uh, on-camera uh, roles from time to time, uh, voiceover has been like my bread and butter, and I absolutely love it for the past 30-some-odd years. Um, how do you get into voiceover? Uh, I'm asked that a lot. And the answer is you start out by taking classes like improv classes and acting classes. A lot of times people come up to myself and my contemporaries and say, hey, I do a lot of funny voices, but believe it or not, the voice is the last thing we do when we're creating characters uh, in the studio. In fact, a lot of times we don't even know what voices we'll be doing um, when we get to the studio. So. My advice is to focus on acting, taking improv classes, sketch comedy is a big one. If you can handle all that, it'll be a breeze once you get behind a microphone. At least I think that's the case. But who am I? I am Zim.